So let's grab this first one. Let's see here. So, uh, the y-intercept is at negative 1. There it is. So this one will be in red. Bam, right here. It goes up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and to the right 1. So that's 1, 4. And I go up another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And to the right one. So right about here. Okay. And we got a line. Good. Let's graph the next one. Y equals 5x plus 10. Uh, 10's up here. So is there a y-intercept? So I'm going to make my slope 5 over 1. And I need these both to be negative. Because if I go up any further, it's uh, going to mess with the bell work there, okay? So I'm going to go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and to the right one. So it puts me right here. And down 5 and to the right one is right here, okay? So what do you notice about these two lines? Parallel. 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 Did I need to graph these? No, you don't. No, I did not. All I need to do is look at the slopes. I found the slopes are the same, so there is an infinite solutions. Or uh, there's no solution, so we just got to look at the y-intercepts. Since they're different, there's no solution. All right, so I suppose we could look at this. Are the slopes the same? Um, no. No, so we do need to actually solve these. All right, so let's start first with our x and y axi. I'll make this one be our y axi there. And uh, we'll make this our, uh, it's our x. Okay. Uh, that's pretty good. <coughs> X and Y. All right, uh, so let's start with this first one. We've got to uh, put our point at negative 1 on the Y axis right here. What's my slope? It's 1 over 1, okay? Because it's a phantom one right here. So we're going to go up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1, and so forth. Oh, these are not in the book, so you may want to do them on scratch paper or something. Okay. All right, uh, let's do the next one. So y equals negative x plus 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, <laughs> 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right here. And we'll go down. So this slope now is negative 1 over 1. Actually, I'm going to make it 1 over negative 1. So I'll go, well, sure, we can start with this one. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one, and so forth. You see, it's looking pretty good. Uh, there we go. Well, this one doesn't show that they <coughs> intersect on the graph, but you can tell that this line would intersect right here. And that point would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And up, one, two, three, four, five. Where's your answer? Another one. So we'll get to the standard form once here in a second, though, okay? So um, these ones, what is our y-intercept? Zero. Zero. Yeah, those phantom zeros, okay? So we do need to see those, and now we can start graphing. And so, since they're both zero, we'll just put this right down the middle. And so this is our x-axis and y-axis. So let's look at this first one. What's our slopage? Negative one. Negative one. Over one. Very good. Okay. Well, it starts at the y-axis of, uh, or the origin rather. Yes. Yep. Because some people don't know what that is or how to find it. You do, Christian, but not everyone does. Okay. All right, so let's use the slopage. So we'll go down one to the right one, down one to the right, and so forth. And you can see it continues in this direction as well. Bam. Let's do the next one. Uh, 2x, so where's my y-axis? Zero. Zero. Whoops. Look, they both oh intersect God. right there. Oh my oh That's pretty sweet. That's so but as it turns out on the test, if you only went that far, you'd get a zero. So I do need to see the graph. 
There it is. I graphed it. Question. So let's look at the slope. This is for this first. This one is for this first one right here, right? So what we do is we got negative 1 over 1. The top numbers are change up and down, or the change in y. The bottom numbers are change in x, which is right and left. So I'd say I go, since it's negative, I go down 1 and to the right 1. Now I can, I can switch that because since there's only one negative, one is odd, so the answer is negative. I can switch that so I can make it positive one over negative one. So the answer is zero, zero. Okay. Listen, if you look at an equation and see that the two y-intercepts are the same, do you need to do any more work? No. Actually, you do. You need to see and make well, sure that the slopes are different. And yeah, and you do need to graph them. Okay. This is uh, probably a better looking graph than mine. It's all good. All right, the worst part about this one is that you have to now write the system of equations, okay? So let's look at this one. There are 26 students in the class, and we're comparing boys and girls. So you've got boys plus girls equals 26. Well, oh, there's one. On the next one, you've got uh, there are two more boys and girls, so. Uh, X is boys, girls is Y, so if you take Y plus 2, you'd get the number of boys. Wait, could you do X, how would you write it, could you write it in, or something, or something more? Uh, yes, yep. This is called substitution. And, uh, well, substitution is uh, very nice, okay? As it turns out, it's better if you call it replacement, though. The reason is because you are actually going to be replacing stuff with other stuff, okay? So just keep that in mind. Substitution, some people call it replacement. Uh, what do you call it? I just solving. Okay. All right. So here's an example. Listen, uh, if if you see something like this as a system of equations, it's much easier to solve these with this technique. Okay. You can still graph it if it's easier for you to graph, but in this case, uh, substituting or replacing is much easier. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look at this one. Well, what you've got here is y equals x plus 4 and y equals 0. Go throw that away. Okay, what, what you can see here is y equals 0, right? So on this one, if y equals 0, what do you think y equals on this one? 0. So I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it with y being 0. y equals x plus 4. Additionally, what was nice about that first one, it gave us the value of y is 0 oh. in our answer. All we've got to do is figure out the x value. So what plus 4 make, gives us 0? Zero? Zero. Oh. Yes. Very good, Drew. Negative 4. That's Done. Do. Let's set up our answer first on this next one. Notice it tells us what the y value is. The y value is negative 1. Negative one. It told us that right here, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this second equation and replace y with negative 1. So I've got x minus negative 1 equals 6. So if you remember this from last year, if you have minus a negative, you do need to change it to plus. Okay? So something plus 1 is 6, right? Well, what plus 1 is 6? Oh, it'll get a little bit more difficult, though, okay? So give me a second. Let me see if I can make this more difficult. So this was the problem that we saw earlier. Uh, and you can see here that it tells us what x equals, right? Yeah, it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with what it be. So in this one. So see, here's an x. There's an x. Let's replace this x with this garbage. So that would give us y 
plus 2. Okay, that's what x well, is. Just 2y plus, plus 2. y equals 26, x. right? Wait, why can't you do 2y plus 2? I'm so confused. I, I, if, yes, now that I will simplify this, Christian, yeah. it will be 2y plus 2. Oh, so, so, like so some of you see... Well, okay, the, let's look at finishing this problem, okay? Oh, that makes some of you would look at this and say, what do I do now? Well, you can play the switch and stay game if you really want to. Uh, which is very easy. You just put the y's on the left, numbers on the right. So you got a y there, and you got negative 2. There's a y and plus 26. So 2y equals 24. So y equals 12. So that gives us half of our answer. It's 12. Notice we are still missing the x value. I knew it. To find the x value, you see, now that we know what y is, Let's just replace this y with 12. 12 plus 2. It's 14. Equals 14. 14. That was a little delay of climbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is making so much sense. Like, yeah. So much sense. <laughs> On this example, you would replace y with 2x, which would give you 2x equals x minus 3. Then you just use the switch and stay game to solve. Some of you don't want to use the switch and stay game. That's fine. Okay? You don't really have to use the switch and stay game. You could solve it uh, more traditionally, like they say add 3 to both sides or uh, minus x on both sides. Something to that effect. Too easy, right? Uh, notice... Let's do both of them, all right? It tells us y, y equals 2... And this one. So we're going to replace this y with 2. So let's rewrite it. 2y equals x plus 4. Can you guys solve for x here? Yeah, it's negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. X equals negative 2. Woo! So it's negative 2. Wait, so it doesn't have to be negative 2, 2. Well, I haven't figured out the other one yet, but uh, Wait, look at that. So, oh yes, that's true. Okay. So now that we found the x value, it already told us the y value is two. We're done. So we have to put this in a point in a coordinate pair. That is correct. Okay. So let's look at the second one. Very good. Y is three x. So let's replace y with. 3x. So this y is 3x. Oh, it's negative 3. And the rest of it's the same. Equals x minus 6, right? So again, I I play the switch and stay game. X is here. Numbers. Yeah. So 3x stays. <coughs> x switches. Uh, negative 6 stays. So this is equal to negative 6. 3x minus 1x is 2x. X equals negative 3. Okay, so now that we need we do need an answer here, we've got negative three. How do we figure out the y value? Where the y value with? Oh it's with three, thank you. That was like very close. A two y. Wait, isn't it just a three? That's like a fancy y. Holy cow. That's like a fancy y, Mr. Sam. No, it's negative three because the six was negative. No, it's a three. All right. Now that we know the x value. There's two ways we can find the y value on this. If we look at this equation, we, we can, yes. Well, no. The x is negative 6. Now what you can do is you're going to place the x in both of these in one of them. So notice on this first equation we had uh, uh, y equals x minus 6. Now we see that x is negative 3, so we're going to replace x with negative 3. So negative 3 minus 6, y is negative 9. Oh, you add those. Now, you should do this. If you do this in both equations, you're going to find out that your answer is correct as long as it's correct. You'll know it's correct. How did you do that, though? So, How did you put negative 9, So let's backtrack to this. We know x is negative 3. What you have is y equals x minus 6. Mm -hmm. What is the value of x in the solution? 3. three. Negative 3. Uh, negative so you're going to replace x with negative 3. y <coughs> equals oh, negative, negative three, 3 minus 6. Oh! 
Wait. What's negative three minus six? Negative nine. Negative nine. Why is it a I get it now. You just Wait, no, 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 I'm not finished. You can check your answer by doing this in the second equation as well. Y equals 3x. Well, the x value is negative 3. What's... Well, I'll explain that in a second. What's 3 times negative 3? Negative 9. It's negative 9. Since this is the same and this is the same, that's a good way to check your answer. You can know for sure that it's correct. The difference now is that when you have one in y uh, slope intercept form, that just means you're going to re be replacing the y because it's y equals some kind of stuff. This is in standard form, so notice where the y is. We're just going to replace it with 3x plus 8, which is what the book did here. Then you've got to distribute the 4, and then you just uh, you can play the switch and stay game from there to solve for x. But listen, on the test, a lot of people just stop at x. They're like, oh, I solved for x. That, that's only half the problem, folks. It's a coordinate pair, and if you solve for x, this is what you'd have. And this is how many points you're going to get. Zero. Well, you'll get some for showing some work. All right, uh, give, this, give these two a shot, C and D, then we'll go over them. We do need to replace this y with what y equals. So let's do that. So we've got 3x plus 4, and then the y value is 2x plus 1. And this equals 26. I, I know that's what you did. And it's very so good. Why wouldn't you just do We do need to finish, okay? All right. So you've got four times this set of parentheses, so we do need to distribute the 4. So what we have is 3x plus... 8x plus 4, which is what Drake has. That's very good. And then you add like terms. From here, I would just play the switch and stay game. Would you guys rather I play the switch and stay game or just do it like Drake did? Switch and stay game. Switch and stay game. Very good. So switch and stay game. Let's uh, send the equal sign down here. We're going to put the x's on the left, numbers on the right. So 3x stays. Y equals 2. 8x stays positive. Four switches and 26 days. So we've got 3x plus 8x, which is 11x. 26 minus 4 is 22. So what is x times what is 22? x equals 2. They're 11 times. 2. x is 2. Well, that's only half the answer because uh, we need the y value now. Uh, and let's look at that first one first. Okay, so we have y equals 2x plus 1. But what was the value of x? 2. 2. It's 2. So let's replace x with 2. Plus 1. Plus 1. Very good. So y equals what's 2 times 2? 4. Plus 4. 4 and then plus 1. Five. Y is. Y equals 5. I get it. 5. Now listen. Now that you've done this, though, just double check to be sure. All right? Let's use this second equation. So what we have is 3x plus 4y equals 26, correct? Correct. Yes. So let's replace the x and the y with their respective values. I got it. So what's the value of x? 2. two. What's the value of y? 2. 5. Two. Oh. What's 3 times 2? 6, six plus 4 times 5? 20. 20. 20 equals 26. 20. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Yeah, since that's true, we've checked the answer, it's good. So now that we have this, we have the answer is 2, 5. So we're going to take y and replace it with 6x minus 4. So notice we've got 2x plus 5, and we've got the 6x minus 4. We're replacing y equals 44. So now let's distribute this 5 up in here. So we've got 2x plus some garbage will equal our 44. So what's 5 times 6x? 30x. 30x 30 minus 5 times 4? 20. It's 20. Switch and stay game. Uh, we'll put the x's on the left, numbers on the right. Uh, 2x stays. 
30x stays. stays, it's positive. Negative 20 switches. So now what we have is 32x. 30, uh oh. That's better. Uh, 32x equals 64. So if you guys don't remember from last year, you're just going to take the coefficient of x and divide it here. 2. 64 divided by 32 is? 2. two. So that gives us the first half of our answer. This is all of it. We've got 2. Uh, but now we do need to solve for the y value. No, for all right. the x. We already solved for x. Well, we just, did, we just replaced the y. So, right. Yeah, six x minus four. yeah, we replaced y, so now we're going to start replacing x with 2 to find y. Oh. So let's look at this first one. This, let's actually look at it. It's going to be easier to find the second one, okay? Uh, the reason that is is because it's y equals some stuff. There's no other manipulation or playing the switch and it's taking it twice. So let's look at this first one. We've got uh, y equals 6 times x. What's the value of x, though? 2. 2. Minus 4. And then we've got to subtract 4. So we've got y equals 6 12. times 2 is 12. 12 minus 4. Minus 4. Y eight. equals? 8. 8. 2 and 8. Hey, that's not that easy. Now that we have these two answers, we can check our work using the standard form equation. So let's look. We've got 2 times x, which is 2, plus 5 times y, which is 8, and this should equal 44. And it does. Well, you don't know that, okay? I do. So I math, so. Nope. 2 and 8. So what's 2 times 2? 4. 4 plus, plus 5, 5 times 8 is? 40. 40. What's 4 40. plus 40? 44. 44. Huh? 44. Are these the same? 44. Yes, sir. They are the same, so this has been checked as well. Yeah. Listen, uh, no work is nice. these, this really isn't that bad. So let's, let's, uh, let's pretend like none of that stuff is there, okay? The nice thing about this is after you write the system, as you can see, you can solve it, okay? You can use either graphing or replacement or substitution. So look at this. We got a uh, total of 75 cookies and cakes. So do we want cookies or cakes to be X or Y? Cookies can be cookies Y. Can be All right, cookies will be Y and cakes cake will, be will be X. X. Okay, it really doesn't matter. So you got 75 of them. So 75 equals cookies and cakes. Standard form, kind of. Let's look at the second one. Uh, we're donated. Phrase. There were four times as many cookies as cakes. So what we're going to do, four times as many cookies. So, four X? Yeah. so there's four times as many yes, that's so very good. Cookies is y. So there's four times as many cookies as cakes. So you got to take the number of cakes, multiply it by four, and that would tell you how many cookies you have. Okay. Could you guys solve this system? No, that's Not really. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you could either replace or you could graph. All right. So, Mr. Thomas cooked 45 hamburgers and hot dogs. You guys want hamburgers to be X or Y? X. Hamburgers can be X. Hamburgers will be X. Okay, so hot dogs will be Y's. So, you got 45 hamburgers, X, and so plus your hot dogs. But look, there's twice as many hot dogs as hamburgers. So, so if I took the number of hot dogs and multiplied it, I'm sorry, twice as many hot dogs. So 2y equals x. Yes, very good. So you got to take 2 times the number of hamburgers, which is x, will equal the number of hot dogs, which is y. Now you just need to solve this system using either method that you choose.